Talk about a cliffhanger. We are back with Rick Pamplin. So, Rick, we have no points to share. How in God's name are we going to fund this completely new movie? I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Well, it was worse than that. Not only did we have a bunch of investors who had bought, in essence, 50% of the movie, but being the kind of filmmakers that you and I and Maggie are, we had given crew people and some of the creatives equity as well. And because we wanted to show respect to Burt Reynolds, we had given away equity to the Burt Reynolds Scholarship Fund, which helps young people get an education and they make a student film, they go to the showcase of films, they win an award, they get a Burt Reynolds Scholarship. So we had over given away. There was, there was nothing left. Yeah, there's I nothing, mean, there's nothing. Know, and, and I had a small piece and you had a small piece and Maggie had a small piece. Then you never like to give away everything. You know, you, you always want to hang on to something when you make a movie. And this was now representing like, you know, two or three years of our lives. So, you know, raising money is a little bit like creative financing and real estate. And when I was in Los Angeles, you know, I took some, some real estate financing courses and I learned this creative financing thing. And you, as long as it's legal, and as long as you have an attorney, it was amazing. It's like how you buy a house down with no money down. How you buy a house down and it's it's under equity and you go take out a bank loan and it, it not only covers your payments for the first year, but you get to refurbish the house. All of these complicated things. So all this stuff was in my head. And I'm like, well, we have to make sure that the old investors, and how cool is this? You believed in us so much that we're going to give you a second movie for free with the exact equity. So Same point bought, structure. <laughs> if you bought 10% of the old movie with a little clip of Burt, now you're going to get a Burt Reynolds movie, the same exact, and it's not going to cost you a penny. Well, if, if, in my experience, the investors I talked to blew their minds. And I, that's the kind of reputation you want to have. You want to, you want to deliver, you want to over deliver and under promise. So our investors in Movie Money Confidential now had two movies. Our crew, our composer, our camera guys, our sound guys, all the people we shared equity ownership with now had two movies, but we had no way to fund it. So, so that's, that's the magic trick. So, so right, tell well, us. We talked about pre-sales. Here's the problem with pre-sales. You're going to have to define what the movie was. And at that point, no one would talk to me. Number two, you're going to have to know you can do it on a budget because however you raise that money, you can't go dip in the pool again. So the idea was, let's go to one investor and say, here's what we're going to do. You put up the budget for the Burt Reynolds movie and we'll double your money and you're out of the deal. You got double your money or nothing. But nobody gets a penny until you double the money. Then what we did is we went in and we made the budget smaller so that it wasn't going to take quite as long as the other film. So that the, the, the investors who had a second film, there's less money to recoup because we've already shot an hour of it. An hour of it is in the can. We don't have to go reduplicate that. So now I just have to fill around it. The final running time is an hour and 39 minutes. And we ended up shooting in Los Angeles with Quentin Tarantino. We ended up spending more money, but because we had an hour to start with from the other film that no one had seen, it was all new footage. We were able to sort of construct this deal. So we, we found an investor, you did, when I say we, Scott, found an investor who got it instantly. It, it just He's a, a business guy who happens to be in real estate and who understands creative financing and all that. We said, look, here's the deal. Give us the money to make the film. An hour of it's already done. And you can see the other film. He was a big fan of the other film. And I know you're a Burt fan. We will double your money and then you're out. But you doubled your money. And there's minimal risk. We minimize the risk and we maximized a double your money payout. And it only took one pitch meeting. Ama yeah, we amazing. Called, right. 
Well, the same thing. You you say it took longer. I say it took about three days. Once we got the idea, because we pitched the distributor, we pitched the guy, then the the money guy wanted a guaranteed distribution deal. So we went back to the distributor. We got that. An LOI. And then, yeah. And then and then the distributor couldn't believe it. I mean, their head was turning. I mean, we had this picture funny. Might have been a week, but it took us a few days. But the idea was, I think we applied creative financing principles and we ran it by everybody and everybody loved it. Everybody thought it was fantastic. And the crew, and this is why I believe in giving points to the crew. The crew was highly motivated. Not only had they seen, had a little taste of the other film because some checks had gone out, but, and they were seeing the film everywhere, they were getting a whole nother film that they would have a piece of, the same piece they had in the other film. So the crew was great. They worked really hard. And I kept going back to the people that said no. And I said, so if you don't want to talk to me, if you don't want to go on camera, if you don't want to talk about Burt Reynolds, then people who didn't really know Burt are going to go on camera. And maybe it's not the real Burt Reynolds story. You got to talk to me. And I said, our movie will be the definitive version. And there were lots of tears, lots of lunches. And I just said, look at my track record as a filmmaker and look at what I'm trying to do for Bert's legacy. And I felt in an odd way, like we were the gatekeepers of Bert Reynolds because he had been smeared in Hollywood tabloids. He, he had had stuff said about him that was completely false. In fact, he addresses this. I don't want to give it away, but it's in the movie. He was hurt. He was angry, like all of us are that get smeared, you know, in, in social media and the internet and all this. And 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 this was a chance to really see what Bert's passions were, what made Bert tick, what he acted like, sounded like, you know, at the end of his life, which he didn't know and we didn't know. Nobody knew this is the end of his life. I figured Bert would go another 20 years. I mean, he was Bert Reynolds, he was indestructible. You know, he was having problems walking and he'd had some medical things, but I mean, he's Burt Reynolds. I mean, he's, he'll come back from that. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to make two or three films of Burt Reynolds, you know, over the next 10 years. And this is somebody I really, really want to work with. Uh, so the film happened because we did some creative financing, because we came up with an idea that I don't know if anybody's ever done it. Let, let me break this down real quick. Let me kind of summarize sure. to make sure everyone, all, especially our filmmaker audience, is crystal clear. In case, in case you ever get in this situation where you have a short movie or a movie that gets expanded to a second movie, basically what we did, and this was all Rick's idea, we went to, I went to a whole bunch of, about 75 different people. I was on the phone for three weeks. It, it seemed like three days, but to me, it was really was three weeks. We got this one guy, Holly, who I had known for a few years, and we made the pitch. And basically, I, I, without giving away the budget, let, let's just say the budget was half a million. It wasn't half a million. I won't tell you what it was, but it was way under a million. So we went to Paul and said, hey, Paulie, if you put in half a million, you'll get a million dollars back. You'll double your money. But after that, you will get no points, no residuals forever. You're, you're out of it. And after that, every single one of our original Movie Money Confidential investors, every single one of our crew, our producer points, everyone will eventually get those points. So it's like, it was a brilliant, brilliant strategy, Rick. And well, um, yes, it was. And, and you were instrumental, but it was because I think we were preserving Bert's legacy. Because Paulie, it, it sounds like, you know, a no money down real estate deal, which is kind of what it was. But it, the intent of us, our group, if that's proper English, was to protect the legacy of Burt and to present the, the raw interview, the uncut, unscripted, uncensored Burt interview in total context. Because everything you see now, you know, is it, propaganda. And it's tabloid, tabloid crap. Well, it's all kinds of nonsense. And, and I wasn't interested in the scandals because the, the scandals are out there and, and he wouldn't have responded. He did, was, he was hurt by all that. 
he so on, on that note, on that note, um, I want you to comment just real quickly because we're we're running up against uh, time here. How how much freedom do you have creatively when you go out and raise the money yourself, as opposed to if KDMG had given us the full budget? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, what happened was when I I was very frustrated in Hollywood. I I sold movies to Warner Brothers and you know all the studios, and I would pitch ideas and and then you know you can't have a man in the lead, you can't have a positive lead black man, you can't have I'm sorry you can't have a woman in the lead, you can't have a positive black role model. You, you, there were all these rules and and all these voices that weren't being heard. And I wanted to be an independent filmmaker. And one of the weirdest things that ever happened when I moved to Orlando, Florida, was I met the guys that did the Blair Witch Project. In fact, I hired Dan Myrick as an editor. And so uh, the the what happened with those guys, and I shared my business advisor, my lawyer, and I knew the guys that did it. Specifically, I knew Dan Myrick quite well, who directed it. And I realized that they had created the greatest model ever, ever. You go out, you raise the money independent. You don't care what anybody says. And in their particular case, they got in Sundance. And be, before the sun rose, it was a midnight screening. Before the sun rose the next day at like four in the morning, they had a $1.2 million signed deal from Artisan against a $350,000 budget. And Amazing. so they made the film they want to make. In fact, I have, they had come to me when they were trying to raise the money. And, and I'm not a big horror film guy and it wasn't really my cup of tea, but there was a different version of the Blair Witch Project. And so they were just looking for $50,000. You know, they, they weren't even looking for that much money at that time. Ultimately they raised 350. They got this guy out of New York, this restaurant guy. He put up the money. Each of the principals got like $20 million you know, big success story, cover of Time and Newsweek, you know, phenomenal box office. But they proved as a total independent that they could make the film they wanted to make. And they did. Yep, yep. And, and to me, that was sort of like, to me, was fate. You know, that's what I wanted to do. So I don't want other people telling me what movie to make. And, you know, I've been very blessed in the last two years to get great reviews and get great ratings and the last two films I've made are the most successful films I've ever made in terms of audience and in terms of critics. And I think I finally found, you know, you know, my voice. I used to have a, a literary agent, Mike Hamelberg in Hollywood. And Mike always said, you'll find your voice, but stop rushing it. You don't have to figure it out at 20, you know. And, and what happened was Spielberg and Lucas and these guys all made it in their 20s and, it, and everybody wanted another version of them. But sometimes it takes a while. And my message to your um, audience, you can raise all the money you want. You must have total integrity and you must be committed and you must be patient. So two quick questions here before we yes. go. As a former development executive um, on many, many studio projects and as a former distributor, what would you what advice would you give to indie filmmakers in terms of the budget range they should be going out and doing these days? Well, if, if you're not a household name, nothing over a million. You're insane. You're crazy. You're, you're just you're risking people's money. If you're a beginner, you're closer to a hundred to three hundred thousand. Okay? Five hundred probably the max. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But it's very, very hard right now to get people interested. And whatever you think you have, I also want to get impart this out. And I don't think we've said this in your other shows. Investors and distributors make up their mind in 30 seconds if they're interested. 30 seconds. This has been statistically proven. And what they want is the title, the log line, and they want a 30-second pitch. The premise, the log line, the genre, the title. And if you don't ace those four things, the conversation, they may sit there and talk to you for 15 or 20 minutes, but they're not going to give you money. They're not going to distribute you. And the point is, 
the minute our distributor heard this pitch, no problem. Well, you're the pitch. You're the pitch master. Well, That's why you're so good at it. But 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 a lot of art of cinema, because it's so expensive, is pitching. You must pitch the best possible project, and you go try it out on a hundred people. And if 80 or 90 of the people say, hey, that's that's a movie I'd like to see, then you've got something. But if you go out to 10 or 12 people and they go, eh, you don't have anything. And somebody said to me that this movie, our new movie that's coming out now, that this is the most brilliant marketing campaign ever. I said, why? He said, the first two words of your movie are Burt Reynolds. <laughs> he said, everybody in the world knows who Burt Reynolds is. Everybody in the cinema world knows who Burt Reynolds is. Your movie is called Burt Reynolds, The Last Interview. It's exactly yeah, what every, every Burt fan was going to want to see it. So final well, question. Yes, as a filmmaker and as a former fundraiser, I know you're really focusing now on writing and directing. What advice, especially post-pandemic, would you give to um, filmmakers about actually raising the movie money? First, that, that was great advice about the pitch, short and sweet. What other advice can you give? You got to have skin in the game. This is what I, I have people contact me every day on LinkedIn and, and Twitter. And I talk to people and, you know, occasionally go to things. And, you know, students ask me, people at film festivals, you've got to have skin in the game. Now, what's skin in the game? You, number one, you've got to have a literary property, something that is uniquely yours that nobody else has, that's catchy and great and you wrote it and you put a copyright on it and you protected yourself. Number two, you've got to have a star. You've got to have some sort, you've got to either have the greatest undiscovered actor in the history of cinema, or you better have a star, a name that somebody can recognize. The difference between raising money with and without stars is like light and dark. It's absolutely un un unbelievable. And the third thing, what do you put in this? Exactly. How long, you, how long have you worked for free? What friends of yours are coming in? What What are you doing? Or is this just a big payday for you? I come in to be, be, be beginning filmmakers. They send me their budget and it's $5 million. And they're going to write and direct it and pay themselves half a million dollars. And they've never made anything. And I'm like, well, this is insanity. This is go make a $100,000 movie that makes a profit. My very first film was made for right around $100,000 and it made back 50 times the budget. That was my first film. Okay, you have to prove you can make money. Not every film I've made has made money and not every film I've invested in, because I invest in movies, has made money. But you, you, you must have integrity, you must have passion, and you gotta have skin in the game. If you don't have any skin in the game, don't call me to invest in your movie. Quick, quick side note about that skin in the game before we leave. You'll, you'll appreciate this. A mutual friend of ours, in fact, a client, Jeff, who's raised money for, I believe, four or five films now. He just on a tear. He got this kind of weird invitation because he, he aligned up on his third film with some big money people who are backing him. And somebody else said, hey, I know you're looking for money, but can I pitch you? in case you and your guys want to come in. So Jeff was on the other side of the table. So Jeff called me up, said, hey, Scott, you're my consultant. Can you just be on the call with me? I want you to kind of give me some advice. So on the call, and I won't, I won't besmirch anyone here, or you know, I, I don't like throwing people under the bus. This one guy who was looking for money um, Jeff asked, so, um, you know, what are you looking for? Is like, you know, it's like a lot of money. And what, what have you put in so far? And he goes, well, I, I've been working on the script. I've been doing this. No, no. What kind of money have you put in? And he couldn't give Jeff a straight answer or his investors. And he said one of the things that needed to urgently be taken care of was some initial legal fees of $5,000. So we get off the call. And Jeff tells me, I'm out. I go, I figured you probably were, but why, Jeff? He goes, because this guy who was pitching me can't even put in $5,000 of his own money. He has no skin in the game. Boom, absolutely. mic drop. Absolutely. It's absolutely true. 
And and the the thing is, Scott, anybody can raise any amount of money that they need, seriously. But the point is to raise it in a way that you can get your next film made and your next film and your next film and build up a track record. And one of the things that wasn't available to me when I started my career is YouTube. Go make a short. Go, go make a little short demo of your film. Do something. Make a little short film. I made four short films before I made a feature. One of them sold. One of them played at an art gallery called Easy TV in Los Angeles. And I had great success with little 15-minute films. I had, and one of them was on the Z channel. So I had films that I had made and financed myself that were in distribution. There's your skin in the game you, right there. Doesn't doesn't matter how much you had skin There in used the game. to be a, a video store. I think they went out of business called Vidiots in, in Los Angeles. And they had a compilation, the best student films of whatever year. And, and, it, and they had my film on the cover of this video. So I would say here, here, I made a short film and it's in the video store. I made a short film, it's on television. I made a short film, it played in theaters. Oh, you can go to this art gallery, this video art gallery in West Hollywood, you can see my film. So all my product was getting distributed. I didn't make a penny on any of those films. The average budget was probably three to five to $10,000, but that was the YouTube of that day. Today, with this new equipment, you can go out with an iPhone or a GoPro and you could make a 12 to 15 minute movie, put it on YouTube and get enough viewers to say, hey, look, I did this, you know, this film, I got monetized. And look at all the people, look at all the comments people made. Proof of because concept. If you, because if you don't put it in the marketplace and if you don't prove yourself in the marketplace, you're not qualified to start with using $5 million of investor money. You're not qualified for a million dollars of investor money. If you're a beginner, start at 100,000. If you've made a $100,000 film that's been successful, go to 300 or 400 or 500, but work your way up the ladder. And, and, and because every time you fail, you're gonna go back down a few steps. So the other thing is, YouTube to me is the greatest thing that, uh, I have friends of mine that have shows. I have friends of mine making a living, making YouTube videos. And to me, they're the great new filmmakers. If you're obsessed with being a filmmaker and, and you wanna get the word out there, and you want to reach people, go on social media, make a short film, do something, enter your short yep, film no in, excuse. in some competition. You've been involved in short films that became feature films. I yeah. was involved in a short film that the, the last project I worked on in Hollywood, I worked with a, a guy, a wonderful guy named Robert Cosper. And we worked on, we got this short film and it was very intriguing. And we developed it into a motion picture that starred Brad Pitt and Bruce Willis, and 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 was an absolutely great film called 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys started as a student film. Lots of great films start as a student film. Yep. So, I mean, don't, don't have any preconceived notions. Get those big dollar signs out of your head. Become a working filmmaker. You know, and if you have to, if you can, I worked in television, I'm, I didn't like it, but I worked on a huge syndicated hit TV show. I've worked on other TV shows and it's a little bit easier than the film business. The money's a little bit bigger, especially when you're getting started and go work on, you know, or I was a TV newsman. I went out yep. and shot stories. Got to start somewhere. Camera. I edited film. I cut film. I did voiceover. I worked with editors. I worked with music. I learned my craft. By the way, I worked at CBS News at a CBS affiliate in Michigan for a year and a half. Five six days a week, I shot footage for CBS News. I did. All you're still you're still working six days a week, man. You're still working six days a week. But I love what I'm doing. You know that old yep. saying: If you love what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. That's so Rick, right. ten o'clock um, at night, I'm talking to you. Yeah, unfortunately, our time is up. Um, just really, I want to thank you for what we talked about that creative control. Since the money was raised independently, you fought and fought and fought the distributor with some of their ideas they want. You fought your editor. You fought a lot of different people, but you you had this vision to make this a love ballad and a very, very respectful film. Every single Burt Reynolds fan will want to see. And since you are the writer-director, where can people see this film? Well, the, the, the distributors opened it 
in a lot of weird places like airplanes. Uh, we're getting people on Emirates that are seeing it. Uh, we're getting uh, it's on Voodoo. What's the best uh, URL though people can go to? Well, it's going to come out later in, in December. We'll have a complete listing. It's it's pretty extensive on MovieMoney.com, and we're working on that now. We like to have a, a, a landing site where you can go anywhere you want. You can go watch it, and however you, if you want to buy it, if you want to rent it, whatever. But that'll be sometime later in December. MovieMoney.com. You can also go on Rick Pamplin on Twitter, Pamplin Film Company on Twitter. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, Pamplin Film Company, Rick Pamplin. And, you know, the minute it's available, we put stuff up and we have a great, I, I just went over 150,000 followers on Twitter. And I love reading the comments from people that see the film. And we have people that are flying to New York from Fort Lauderdale or somewhere and they see the film and they can't believe they can get in touch. Oh, I loved your film. I saw it. I love the post-pandemic Hollywood that allows independent filmmakers to interact much more with fans and audiences, because I, I really want to hear what they have to say. And, and I would, I would plead with your audience, please, if, if you ever like Bert at all, you will love this film and you'll see a side of this man that you'll realize what a gift he was and what an amazing human being. And you'll support the scholarship fund and you'll help us get money back to our investors and to our, principal investor in, in this film, uh, who are wonderful people. Anyone that writes a check and supports a filmmaker is a wonderful person. And if I make another film and you ever invite me back, we should talk about the care and feeding of how to handle your investors. Because many of my investors and your investors are multiple over decades, that people that have believed in us and stick with us. And you, you really have to cherish, they're very special people that will give people a chance to make art, to make film, and hopefully make a profit, but do something that they're proud of. And, you know, you've made a lot of success. You've made a lot of movies. I've done that. I'm very grateful and very thankful. But we should do a show someday on the care and feeding of investors, because a lot of filmmakers I know don't appreciate them and, and, and are rude and burn those bridges. And I try never to burn those bridges. I try to respect those people within reason. And occasionally you get some crazies, but you know, you get that in all walks of life. Well, big shout out to Paulie. He was our executive producer who made Burt Reynolds last interview possible. Rick, thanks for your time. If this was an hour long show, I would love to talk to you longer, but uh, really, really appreciate your passion and uh, the projects that you make. All right. Best of luck to best. everybody. We hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's Time! There's never been a better time to make your own indie film. And if you have a dream project you're excited about and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.